Teachers of Reddit what is the most depressing thing a student has told you about their home life? My students were debating on what hurt the worst when being beaten by their parent. The whole conversation was disturbing to say the least, but one kid won when he mentioned the cord for the television. He even stood up and proved it by removing his shirt and showing the scars. Looked like Django. It went from students laughing to complete silence and then crying. Did you report what you heard slash saw? What happened with each of your students? I did, it was a small island. Child abuse was pretty common, so nothing came of it. This was a few years ago. This student came into class one day really late and escorted my some official. He threw his bag on the ground and sat in his seat frowning. Turns out, the day before he went home and his foster parents had decided they no longer want him so he went into the care of social services. Everything about this child went downhill from there. I was also in an interview with a mother and her son and she straight up tells us that she's not too concerned about her son as he's not her favorite child. The defeated look on her son's face still tears me up. The fact that people like this are able to have kids while loving people struggle to conceive is effed up on a cosmic scale. This. This is what has killed me for so many years. Husband and I just finished the licensing process to foster slash adopt in our state. I'm infertile, so here we go. Hope we can help some kids. Got a message today about why a student could not come to class yesterday. Sorry I couldn't come to class, there were gunshots right outside my apartment and I thought I was going to die. The police did come eventually and I had to give a statement. I will get the work from yesterday done today. Thanks. Yay you get that extension. It's so very sad that the kid thinks that is the biggest thing that you will worry about, the work that he didn't do yesterday. Poor kid. I've noticed when students encounter trauma, they either dive headfirst into school work as a form of escapism or become completely disengaged, even from their peers. Mental health of students is something I consider with each lesson, especially right now. It's only anecdotal but this fits. My father abruptly passed a couple years back. I was in graduate school and my little sister was in her third semester of undergraduate. So we weren't adolescent students by any means. But I dived completely into my coursework as an escape and my sister became completely disengaged, eventually dropping out. I cannot imagine how an adolescent student deals with the death of a parent, along with other forms of trauma. Yeah. Sometimes family emergency means a long sad story that nobody wants to explain while calling in to explain why they're missing class. Like today my stepson had a family emergency and missed online school because he ran away from his bio mom's house last night. She was her usual controlling and abusive self all day yesterday while he tried to attend online school, stabbing her nails into his scalp so his hair hides the marks, screaming swears, and even taking the computer away from him during class for timeouts. And apparently the last straw was making him look at her and talk to her while she took a bath. He's 13 years old, and I can't exactly scold him for deciding he's tired of being forced to look at his mother's tits and bush, and trying to walk the mile down the road to his dad's house instead. CPS only got involved long enough to give him a card for a program that'll let him live with his elderly grandparents for most of a year, but insisted he go back to his mom's house today. Uck. taught at an inner city charter school. Had a bright sixth grade girl who started sleeping during my classes, which was not like her. When I asked after school what was up, she told me that her family, her, two younger sisters, and crackhead mom, moved into the homeless shelter and the last time she slept through the night, all their stuff got stolen. Aw crap we had a kid like that. He slept every day and the principal told me that the family got robbed at a homeless shelter so they were squatting in a vacant house. It was his job to stay up all night and keep lookout. He was 12. We let him sleep in the nurse's office. ETA, this was in Detroit, circa 2008. So right after the big crash, there was just nothing. Not that there is ever much. A female university student in China told me her mother tried to sell her for $8 as a baby. A few weeks ago one of my online kids had a band aid on her left temple so I asked what happened. She said my mom was angry with me and threw a pencil and it stuck in my head, with blood. I had a girl playing with something while sitting at the carpet. 
rolling it back and forth and putting it in her mouth and taking it out and rolling it around again. I told her to give it to me when the other students started their independent work. She gave me this large green pill. At recess I ask her about it and she says her mom and dad give her and her siblings one of these every night to make them sleep. I take the pill to admin and tell them what she told me before searching Google images to find out what it could be. I find a short list and go back to admin and I'm told it isn't my job to worry about that. I try several times that day to get answers and they say they think it's melatonin so stop overstepping my place. This girl and her siblings are in and out of foster care and come to school with no food and filthy clothes. She came to school in a sweatshirt covered in dried blood three days in a row. Her parents wouldn't even sign the papers to get the kids the free school lunches, I forged the mom's signature every month. Thank you for looking out for those kids. I sincerely hope you never got in trouble for it. Op did a god-tier job, realized her position and decided to do the most minimal of things which makes an enormous impact on that kid. I hope they are doing fine. This thread has brought up so many good teachers and also pointed out how effed up and crafty parents can be. How is it not your place? From my understanding a teacher is a mandated reporter, so what was up with admin? Some people need to lose their jobs. It's not your place is because if you keep digging they have work to do because they're going to have to actually effing do their job and launch an investigation with child services and they don't want to do that because they're effing lazy. I work in foster care and the amount of times I hear that teachers didn't report something because the principal told them it wasn't their place makes me so sad. You're likely the only person outside the family that consistently sees the child and sees the everyday changes other people don't. Thank you for doing your best. Man that's so sad. I can't believe there are people that don't immediately want to help kids in these situations. Thank God for people like you. I wonder what that green pill is. That is really sad. It sounds like NyQuil. It's not safe for children under 12. There's children's NyQuil but even that shouldn't be used daily. I don't want to give out too many details but I've had to fill out four CPS reports in my four years of teaching. Three for students that either confided in me or had signs that they were being physically abused and one that was sexual abuse from the child's father. It's honestly the worst part of the job, having to hear and see just the awfulness some kids have to go through. Last year I was student teaching and I had to call. The whole week after I was so sad for my student. It was awful. At the end of my term the student said I wish you were my mommy. It broke my heart. F that's some heavy stuff. As somebody who was physically beaten as a kid people don't understand the lasting effect it has on you. It changes you for life in ways people wouldn't expect. I hope that kid has a bright future. If you've had four different students in just four years of teaching trust you so much that they tell you about something like that, it's proof you're an amazing teacher who makes them feel safe. It was my first year teaching and the holidays were approaching. A second grade student asked my why so not the butthole visits everyone else's home, but skips hers. On Christmas Eve, my father and I played Santa. We dropped off gifts at their home for each child, with of course the permission of the legal guardian's parents were in jail. When I was in second grade my principal called me into his office one day just to ask me how many siblings I had. I was confused, and when I told my mom she just assumed it was a question for the free lunch program. But that Christmas Eve my principal dressed up as Sanat the butthole and dropped off two trash bags of toys. My mom cried, because she and my dad had no money that year. I promise you, those presents meant a lot to those kids because they meant so much for me. Keep doing what you do. My house burned down when I was in fourth grade right after Thanksgiving. My teachers gave me so many stuffed animals and then we got into our new house on Christmas Eve, it was a modular put where the old one was, the entire community had gotten together to make sure we had gifts. My family was not well off and it meant the world to me. I will always remember the fancy stuffed bear my teacher got me and walking into an almost empty house with a big Christmas tree stuffed with presents under it. And I think if I remember right, many of those stuffed toys ended up going to the police department, once I grew out of them, to have in vehicles in case there are accidents or calls with children involved. Couldn't agree more with your sentiment. These kind of things truly have an impact on kids. There it is. The ugly cry. Kids need not just teachers like that but also leaders like that. This made me tear up honestly, 
I had the same bus driver as my three older siblings when I got to elementary school and my mind had reached the same conclusion, so not the butthole always forgot. She got me one of those soft sweatpants and matching hoodie sets in my favorite color. I saw her in high school. Somehow she recognized me and I remember giving her a hug and sobbing at 18. My mom taught in a very low-income school and every year would go to the dollar store and pick up Christmas presents for all of her students. She knew that many of them didn't get any other gifts for the holiday. She also had stories about how they needed to be careful when constructing standardized tests because there were students who might answer a question like what do you do when you're hungry with go to bed or similar things. I have a friend in education and they do a secret so not the butthole for the most at need kids, and the siblings of those kids. She says you can tell the ones who won't get anything on Christmas Day as they save the gift to open at home. Likewise they also have issues with standardized testing, one English essay topic was to write about a recent holiday with an example that featured a flight, hotel, the pool etc. Many of these kids had never experienced a big holiday like that and were confused by the question. I wrote about the same holiday till I was like 17? When I was 3 we went to Disneyland and I had vague memories of it. When I was 4 my little brother was born prematurely with major complications, he was legal to drink before we got it all paid off, and we never really did a vacation after that. I just kept embellishing the story and adding siblings lol. As one of these kids, I had to craft all my essay experiences. I was always embarrassed because my family didn't have the money slash time for stuff like that. Or when they would ask what we got up to over the Christmas holidays, like, nothing? Played with the other kids from the street like every other day. Well the most exciting thing that happened was I lost power in a snowstorm for three days I hated the winter breaks because we would lose power frequently. School provided me so much, food, water, and love. Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube. And share them with your friends. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. We welcome your comments below. Another of our videos will begin shortly.